Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So another mini PC, it's been a while since I have reviewed one. And this is a low end mini PC, okay? It's the B-Link U55 that was sent to me from geekbuying.com to review here. It's powered by the Core i3-5500U. Yes, it's an old chip, but in my experience, even though it's old, it is actually better than the Gemini Lake N4100 in terms of single threaded performance and graphics performance. So the mini PC is actually a little bit smaller than I imagined it to be. I thought it might be a little bit bigger because it's fan cooled 15 watts. So here are our accessories. So we're gonna find the power supply, obviously, that we're gonna need to power it. Uh, we have two, by the looks of it, HDMI cables here. So, yep, we do. Okay, so a shorter one, I guess if you're gonna Visa mount it, put it on the back of a monitor or something like that, you just need the short one. And then a slightly longer here. HDMI cable. So it's great that they have supplied this. If you need a longer one, then of course you can easily source one of those. The power supply, so EU, and it is 12 volts, 3 amps, the output with the positive terminal in the middle right there. And here is our mini PC. Okay, more accessories too. So this must be right here, the mount for it. Visa mount. Yep, okay. Tiny little bracket right there. Uh, we have a user manual, so basic operation after service, and just what's this, internet mini PC user help, they have even... So the housing of this mini PC, it's made out of a hard plastic, and it seems a good quality and the finish of it so far, just looking at it. We've got the DC in there of course to power it, this is our exit vent right here, so warm air will come out of this, and I'll check on the fan noise later on in this review, we have two upside down HDMI 1.4a ports here, two USB 2s also upside down, and then our gigabit LAN 2. Again, upside down, the motherboard seems to be flipped around here for some reason. And on the right we have just an intake vent here, one of two. And on the left, more vents as you can see, and a micro SD card slot. Up the front of the mini PC here we have what looks like a microphone, this little dot is in fact a reset switch here for the BIOS, so if it freezes up or you're running into problems I guess, it saves you having to open it up and unplug the little battery in there. So two USB 3 ports, Type-C USB 3, 3.5mm headphone jack with mic support, and then a power button right here that does have a built-in status LED to let you know it's on as you can see right now. So it is very easy to gain access to the internals, just four screws on the bottom and then the whole plate just lifts right up. So we could upgrade the RAM, I don't think you can get though DDR3 spec 16 gigabyte single stick. I think that's only DDR4 that we can get with that. And here we have a 2280 M.2 SATA 3 SSD that you can easily replace as well. And then right here on the lid, this is where you can attach, they've got it taped to the top of it so it doesn't damage, get damaged inside there rattling around in transit. A 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD if you wanted to. So good expandability and very easy to upgrade and swap components here. But you cannot change the wireless card. So the BIOS, as you can see right here, I've got full access to everything. So it's completely unlocked. Now with this low end CPU, it's not really much use. We can't exactly... Uh, do much here. So under volting or increasing the power limit, for example, those particular settings aren't open to us, even though we've got everything here. So on first boot, you will have to go through the Windows setup, and these are the pre-installed setup languages on the Windows 10 image. So we have 103 gigabytes free here on first boot, so I haven't installed anything just yet before I start my review. One other thing that's interesting to note, that it's running Windows 10 Pro that I did not expect here, and it's all activated. It doesn't seem to have any problems. I can go into Windows Updates, and it's working. It's pulling through the updates there too. So the 8 gigabytes of RAM that is installed, if you're wondering about the speeds it is running at, well, it's 1600 megahertz, and of course it's just single channel with the only single stick in there. So the boot time is quite quick, it only really takes about 15 seconds or so and you're into desktop as you can see. So I've switched over now to screen capturing, this just gives you a better look at everything. Now I wanted to show you the Geekbench 4 score from the system itself, but I've been running into a lot of problems. It just crashes all the time, uninstalled, reinstalled it. I even moved over to another SSD on Windows and it crashed then as well, so I don't know what is going on, but it doesn't seem to be instability of the CPU or anything like that, because everything I have been doing now, using this for over a day, 
no problems. But this is the kind of score you can expect, okay? So single core score here will be better than the uh, Polo Lake and Gemini Lake Mini PCs. Their multi-core score is less. So the typical, the Gemini Lake N4100 that I have reviewed a lot of Mini PCs of, you're gonna get a score here of about 5,300, 5,200. Uh, and about 1800 here. So yes, it is a little bit faster and it does feel a little bit snappier too. In and out of Windows moving about doing things here, the menu the way it pops up here too in Windows doesn't have that typical Gemini Lake or Polo Lake lag that we typically see. Even though that's a quad core, the dual cores here, they're locked to two gigahertz. So there's no turbo, there's no actual adjustment in the frequency at all. It just sits there. So I wanted to do a little bit of a real world test here. Uh, so here we have Geekbench, sorry, <laughs> speed test, okay? And I want to just run this now to get the idea of what kind of wireless speeds to expect. So I'm not having any problems uh, with the wireless range and the performance seems to be good because I'm through a couple of walls here before the router that's in the, like the lounge of the studio apartment here. And it's performing well, as you can see. I mean, there's a lot of ads on this this site. Now the throughput, if you're going to connect up to say an FTP server, with the wireless here, it's gonna max out about 380 megabits per second. So I do recommend using the gigabit LAN port there for maximum speeds, of course, if you can. So see, that's fine right there. So no problems there uh, with the speed. So I wanted to just jump into Google. I'm gonna do my tab test here and we'll just follow it up with uh, something random, okay? We'll just search uh, cars and just bring up a whole bunch of different websites here and we'll check on the load time of that. One of them's YouTube too, so we'll check out the streaming performance in YouTube. Okay, so they're all loading in there and we'll swap between these tabs. So that is performance, that is good. In fact, I'm gonna have to say again that this, yes, is definitely better than the Gemini Lake and the Apollo Lake Mini PCs, the way this is loading in. Even though it's two cores versus four cores, this is two cores, four threads. So this is uh, just a little mute that right there. See if I can stream this in 4K. No, it's only 1080p HD. So we'll go to a 4K demo clip here. See how it handles it. See that loads in really quick, in fact. It seems to be very fast here. Set this to 4K. All right, back on to play again. And we'll enable those stats. We'll take a look at the drop frames because there probably will be some here in Chrome. It will probably be continually dropping. Okay, it is, as you can see, so 21 dropped and it's chugging away a little bit. This isn't quite as smooth as I would have hoped for. Now, if you use Edge, then it's completely different. Edge is gonna be nice and smooth, so that's good in that regard. So this is really what a low-end little mini PC like this is good for, okay? You just document edits and things like that. So I'm not really having too much of an issue right here doing the edits, copying and pasting and things like that, scrolling. I've got quite a few pages, 83 here, and you can see that performance, that is good. Moving over now to Excel spreadsheet and search and replace and things like that. It's going to be fine as long as the spreadsheets aren't absolutely huge. Of course, loading off the SSD is definitely helping here. So I'll close that right down. I won't save that. And a couple of videos here to test out. So this is a 4K clip that was recorded on, I think, my Galaxy Note 4 or something. Or yeah, back in the day. Okay, so this should play just fine. As you can see, that is very smooth. However, with video files, I'm in Kodi now, this tends to be actually a lot better at playing the more demanding files like 4K. And you can see I've got uh, one right here too, 10-bit. Let's just play this and see if it's able to do it. So there are some stutters here at the beginning. And it's getting a little smoother, but not really. Even the mouse pointer is just completely lagging out. So that is just way too demanding for this particular hardware. I mean, that is 140 megabits per second. So we'll try now uh, HD. Okay, so maybe it can handle this HD one. Okay, a little better, but still, even with Cody here, not, not great performance. And then I do have gravity right here. So this is a 2K trailer. This, at least, it should be able to handle just fine. Okay, I can see that at least is playing back. So for HD files, and ones that aren't HEVC codec or VP9, then it will work out. 
And a quick look at it now running Linux Mint. So no problems, everything's working, Bluetooth, wireless, performance is very good here as well. So that is good news for anyone wanting to run Linux on this particular mini PC. Now onto gaming performance. So lighter, older titles such as Counter-Strike here, this is Global Offensive, we're getting, okay, just over 30 frames per second. It's not ideal, but it is just playable here. This is 720p on the lower settings too, by the way. And it will dip below 30 frames per second. So the performance is similar to the Gemini Lake, but slightly better, I find. All right, so we'll take a look now at the thermals. It is good. I haven't really noticed it fluctuate too much. The core frequency might dip down a little bit when you're gaming, but there's no thermal throttling here or power limit throttling. You can undervolt a little, okay, but it's probably not really needed just with this dual core because the frequency is always stuck at two gigahertz here. Now, fan noise, it's on, it's cycling on and off, and um, it is a little annoying, and you definitely hear it when gaming. It is about 45 decibels for those interested. So definitely audible. If it's inside a case or in a TV case or something like that, you might not hear it as much, but if it's out on your desk, you will definitely hear it. This is a mini PC for light tasks, light computing. It does feel faster than the Gemini Lake mini PCs for browser performance, for general computing, spreadsheets, docs. There it feels faster. Gaming performance as well, a little bit faster than those particular quad-core low-end CPUs. And let's not think that this can do really more than the low-end tasks or what this CPU is. It's a Core i3, you have to remember, it's an old one as well, it's a little bit dated. So no demanding work on this, otherwise you're gonna be in for a bit of a lag fest, it's gonna be very slow. So no video editing and hardcore gaming and, and AAA titles and things like that, of course. You're never gonna be able to play this on a chip like this, it's just gonna be a slideshow. <laughs> so don't even bother to go there whatsoever. So it does come with the RAM, which is good. It comes with the hard drive. You can add a 2.5 inch hard drive. The build quality is very good. Thermals as well are really good, but it's lacking in the video decoding performance. So that's why it's hard to recommend this because 4K HEVC, 10 bit files, absolute struggle for this particular hardware to play that back. Even at a 100 megabit or even 80 megabit encoded file, it will still be very choppy and not great. So that's when I would say, if you're gonna be playing back videos on this, go for a more modern chipset, something that has the hardware decoding support, like Intel's Nook, the uh, 5005 Gemini Lake one that I reviewed as well. You've got two RAM slots in that, but you have to supply the RAM, have to supply the hard drive, so it will be a little bit more expensive, but overall, probably a much better purchase there. Thank you so much for watching the review of the U55 from B-Link. Bye for now.